Hi guys, welcome back. Now we're going to um, to tackle the solar system. We're done with the universe. Now let's go to the solar system. So the solar system it's very famous from elementary grade six. Not just the solar system. It comprises the sun, eight planets, four planets, Pluto, satellites, asteroids, comets, and minor bodies. So those are the Kuiper belt and interplanetary dust. Okay. So again, you can familiarize the members of the solar system by by singing this song. Singing this song. Mercury, Venus, and Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, what night Pluto. Okay? Because Pluto is already um, considered or as dwarf planet. Okay? So this is your uh, diagram for the solar system. So the solar system is located in the Milky Way galaxy, a huge disk, disk sea, and a spiral-shaped galaxy about at least 100 billion stars and other bodies. It consists of that billion stars. Its spiral arms rotate around a globular cluster or bulge of many, many stars at the center of which lies a supermassive black hole. And you can research black hole in many YouTube channels or you can research it some in some science websites so this galaxy is about 100 million light years across and the solar system revolves around the galaxy center on once in about 240 million years so we are the solar system is still revolving in our galaxy okay like that 240 million ambot og naka rotate na bata mura gwap ah pata or revolve na tan naka complete ta gusto ka revolution wala pa kay pila pa idad sa atong solar system 4.5 to ay billion naman di ay so divide ra na sa siya okay ba na ta kapila na ta ni revolve around the, the galaxy so the milky way is part of the so called local group of galaxies which in turn is part of the virgo supercluster of galaxies the asteroid belt lies between mars and jupiter so you can see it in the video later. Meteorites are smaller asteroids because asteroids is bigger than meteorites. They are thought of as remnants of a failed planet. Okay, planets are from the origin of the planets. They can say that a planet is gonna be made of meteoroids, asteroids, some different process. One did not form due to the disturbance from the Jupiter's gravity. Okay, one of not remnants. Those are called meteoroids. So the Kuiper belt lies beyond Neptune, 30 to 50 astronomical unit, one unit is from Sun Earth distance to 150 million kilometers, and comprise numerous rocky or icy bodies a few meters to the hundreds of kilometers in size. Then the Oort cloud marks the outer boundary of the solar system and is composed mostly of icy objects. Take note the boundary is the Oort cloud. So for the large scale of features of the solar system, much of the mass of the solar system is concentrated at the center of the sun. Na as the sun ang pinakadako ng mass sa solar system. While the planets that are revolving around the sun, um, they're ambot pila ratio, but are very uh, less dense than the sun. So orbits of the planets are elliptical and are on the same plane in our orbits because the planets move around the solar system in orbits and the shape is elliptical. All planets revolve around the sun. Okay. Then the periods of revolution of the planets increase with increasing distance from the sun. The innermost planet moves fastest and the outermost the slowest. Siyempre, kay ang dool sa sun, gamay ra ang orbit ngayong tuyokon. That's why they revolve the fastest. While the, the outermost, for example, Neptune, siya ang pinakahinay mo revolve. It's because ang iyang orbit, mas dako man. Kaya naman siya sa outer. Pinakuha. Then all planets are located at regular intervals from the sun. Nga no? So that, di sila magbangga. Bangga. But there are instances nga mag, mag interchange sila of kanang, like the Uranus and the Neptune. Okay? Small scale features of the solar system. Small scale stuff. Most planets rotate prograde. Okay. Review your relevant vocabulary. 
Inner terrestrial planets are made of materials with high melting points such as silicates, iron, and nickel. For example, the Earth, okay? Ang Earth, ang atom core is mainly composed of iron element. That's why natay gravity. They rotate slower than have thin or no atmosphere, higher densities, and lower contents of volatiles, hydrogen, helium, and noble gases. In the outer four planets, Jupiter, are called gas giants or ice giants for the last two planets, Uranus and Neptune, because of the dominance of gases and their larger size. They rotate faster, have thick atmosphere, lower densities, and fluid interiors rich in hydrogen, helium, and ices. And the ice is composed mainly by water, ammonia, and methane. Take note for those compounds. So these are the element abundance on Earth, meteorites, and universe. Take note for the data and next here. So for the abundance of elements, Earth's origin known mainly from its combustional difference with the entire universe. So planet making process modified original cosmic material. Now let's go to the origin of the solar system. This have um kind of many hypotheses the origin of the solar system. So first nebular, it was by Emmanuel Swedenborg, Emmanuel Kant, and Pierre Simon Laplace. Independently thought of a rotating gaseous cloud that cools and contracts in the middle to form the sun and the rest to a disk that become the planets. Take note from the clouds. Kikan sa cloud kuno ang atong solar system. Okay? And then, mag-cool siya, mag-contract, o mag-cool gani, if there is a change in temperature, o hot siya. What do you think is the behavior of the molecules? If there is a high temperature, diba? There is a higher kinetic energy in which the atoms are behaving like rapid speed. They're going to have to bombard with each other. And if it has an immediate cooling, those atoms tend to be at rest and to contract, to be compact, thus forming the other members of the solar system. But this theory failed to account for the distribution of angular momentum in the solar system. Wala niya na-explain ang angular momentum. That's why this theory failed. So, mo ni siya, self-gravity contracts as a gas cloud. And this is the process of the nebular hypothesis. Take note for this. And then encounter hypothesis. At least there are six encounter hypotheses. First is by Bakun's sun comet, the encounter between the sun and the comet that sent matter to form a planet. Okay, para na ang kang Bakun. Next kay kay James Jeans, encounter between the sun and a star. Gather pang. And then drawn from the sun matter that would condense, na condense to form planets. Maputo ang kang James Jeans. Next, we have from Chamberlain and Moulton's planetesimal hypothesis in which the star much bigger than the sun, passing by the sun, draws the gaseous filaments from both. Nagkinuha ay sila. On which planetesimals were formed. Mabuto ang kang sa planetesimal. Next is by Lytle Ton, Ray Lytle Ton, sun's companion star colliding with another. Companion sa sun, wala agis kasi. A star collide with another protoplanet that breaks up to form Jupiter and Saturn. Okay, that's his encounter hypothesis. And Kang Otto Smith's accretion theory proposed the sun passed through a dense interstellar cloud. Cloud, interstellar, composed of gas, dust, and other components. Emerge with a dusty, gaseous envelope and eventually become planets. Encounter, gahapon Encounter. And then for Wolfson's capture theory, separation of James Jeans near collision hypothesis, the sun drags from a near protostar and a filament of material which becomes the planets. So collision between protoplanets close to the sun produce the terrestrial planets. Nagcollide ang mga protoplanets, meaning. Um, it's not like uh, planets which you see on a form, but proto-planets, like rocks, like asteroids. Okay? Now, for this, another origin, we have sun-star interaction by Eurace. Meteorites ang iyang studyhan. Um, 
it's like um, the meteorite constituents have changed very little since the solar system era. Mainly, the sun-star interaction relies from the information of meteorites. Okay. Now, we have the protoplanet hypothesis. This is the current hypothesis. About 4.6 billion years ago, in the Aryan arm of the Milky Way galaxy, a slowly rotating gas and dust cloud dominated by hydrogen and helium starts to contract due to gravity. Mo contract siya, nga naman, birahon sa gravity. And take note that hydrogen and helium are dominant in the Milky Way galaxy as well as in the universe. So, it's slow lang siya rotate until it contracts due to gravity forming the solar system. As most of the gas moves to the center, even though eventually become a protosan, katong mass of that elements move towards at the center, it becomes a protosan. And the remaining materials form a disk around that the center eventually became the planets and momentum is transferred outwards. It's like that. So due to collisions, fragments of dust sticking to each other, forming larger bodies, and they became planets. And those planets, protoplanets, are formed by these components, frozen water, from those ice, icy planets, ammonia, methane, this is for the gaseous planets, for, and with silicon, aluminum, iron, and for the terrestrial planets. Mo na ang iimun sa mga planet, ang happy collision. Okay? Then, high-speed collisions with large bodies destroy much of the mantle of Mercury, puts Venus in retrograde motion. That's why Venus is not prograde, but it is retrograde. Different direction. Yung rotation. So, collisions of the Earth with large object produces the Moon, Nerdy from collisions, this is supported by the composition of the moon, very similar to the Earth's mantle. Okay, the composition of the Earth's moon is the same as the component of the Earth's mantle. So, when the proto sun is established as the star, its solar wind blasts hydrogen and helium, while it is in the inner planets beyond Mars to form gas strands, leaving behind the system we know today. One of over 500 known solar systems in the entire Milky Way galaxy. The solar system came into being about 4.5 billion years ago when a cloud of interstellar gas and dust collapsed, resulting in a solar nebula, a swirling disk of material that collided to form the solar system. The solar system is located in the Milky Way's Orion star cluster. Only 15% of stars in the galaxy host planetary systems, and one of those stars is our own sun. Revolving around the sun are eight planets. The planets are divided into two categories based on their composition, terrestrial and Jovian. Terrestrial planets, including Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are primarily made of rocky material. Their surfaces are solid, they don't have ring systems, they have very few or no moons, and they are relatively small. The smallest and closest to the Sun is Mercury, which has the shortest orbit in the solar system at about three Earth months. Venus is the hottest planet, with temperatures of up to 867 degrees Fahrenheit due to an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and extensive lava flows. Next to this world of fire is a world of water, Earth. The water systems on this planet help create the only known environment in the universe capable of sustaining life. The last of the terrestrial planets, Mars, might have also supported life about 3.7 billion years ago when the planet had a watery surface and moist atmosphere. Beyond the four terrestrial planets of the inner solar system lie the Jovian planets of the outer solar system. The Jovian planets include gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The gas giants are predominantly made of helium and hydrogen, and the ice giants also contain rock, ice, and a liquid mixture of water, methane, and ammonia. All four Jovian planets have multiple moons, sport ring systems, have no solid surface, and are immense. The largest Jovian is also the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter. Nearby is Saturn, the solar system's second largest planet. Its signature rings are wide enough to fit between Earth and the Moon, but are barely a kilometer thick. Past Saturn are the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The slightly bigger of these ice giants, Uranus, is famous for rotating on its side. Next to Uranus is Neptune, the outermost planet in the solar system and also one of the coldest. Orbiting the terrestrial planets is the asteroid belt, a flat disk of rocky objects full of remnants from the solar system's formation, from microscopic dust particles to the largest known object, the dwarf planet, Ceres. Another disk of space debris lies much further out and orbits the Jovian planets, the icy Kuiper belt. Apart from asteroids, the Kuiper belt is also home to dwarf planets such as Pluto and is the birthplace of many comets. Oort the Kuiper belt is the Oort cloud, a vast spherical collection of icy debris. It is considered the edge of the solar system since that is where the gravitational and physical influences of the sun end. Our solar system's particular configuration of planets and other celestial objects, all revolving around a life-giving star, make it a special place to call home. So we have recent advancements or information on the solar system. 
So we have here system exploration of Mars. There are many explorations happen in Mars and I want you to watch this video. Rosetta's Comet. So, in order for you to 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 see what's in a comet, I want you to watch this video. advancement is we have the Pluto flyby. Nga nung nawa siya sa sa atong sa atong solar system. Because it is already considered as a dwarf planet. Watch this video. Thank you for watching!